Welcome to Think Academy July Grade Four Math Challenge. Let's take a look with a question. In the figure below, lines A, B, and C intersect at point O. Given that angle one is twenty nine degree, angle two is seventy six degree, what is the measure of angle three? Okay, by looking at a figure, I can see angle one, angle two, and angle three. They are all pointing at different directions. I would love to see angle three be on the same line as angle one and angle two. Therefore, I need to learn the concept for the vertical angles. Vertical angles are angles that are created by two intersecting lines. The two opposite angles are called the vertical angles, and they are the same. Therefore, I can see that angle three having a vertical angle, angle four, and they are the same. Now I can see that angle one plus angle four plus angle two will be one hundred eighty degree, as they are in the same line, line B. Because I know angle one is twenty nine degree, angle two is seventy six degree. Therefore, I can calculate out angle four equal to one hundred eighty. Minus twenty nine, minus seventy six, which will equal to seventy five degree. Because angle three equal to angle four, therefore we know angle three will equal to seventy five degree. In this question, we need to understand the vertical angles are the opposite angles made by two intersecting lines, and the opposite angles having the same degree. Also. We need to understand the angle relationships. Understand the flat angle will be one hundred and eighty degree. Let's take a look with question number two. There are how many rectangles in the picture below? This is a composite figures. In order for us to find all the rectangles, we need to count in orders. Order meaning from left to right, top to bottom. Here. We are going to split the figure into row one and row two. Let's take a look with row one. There are one, two, three, three single rectangles, and then we can see that two of the singles can form a bigger. Double rectangles. Therefore, for double, there are two rectangles, and then three single one can also form the large long rectangle, and they have one of them. And let's take a look with row two. In row two, we have one, two. Three, again, we have three single rectangle. As for double, two of the single one next to each other can form a longer rectangle. Therefore, we have two double rectangles. For triple, three single rectangles can form a long triple rooms. Therefore. We have one in the triple categories. Then don't forget row one and row two. They can add up together. As for this one, can also form a big rectangle. Here is one of them. So as for single, we have three of them. And then for double, as for the double, we can have one side, and this will be one of the double. And moving the rectangle around, we can find two double ones. And for triple, this whole big shapes is a triple. Therefore, for each row one. Only counting row one total, we have six. 
Counting row two, we have six. Counting row one and row two, we have six. There are four when we're looking for total. We have 18 rectangles. In this question, we would like to count in order and add them up. Okay, let's take a look with question number three. There are 64 cookies. Albert eats one-fourth of the cookies. Ken eats three-eighths of all cookies. How many cookies do they eat in total? As for here, all cookie stands for 64 cookies. There are two methods for solving this question. Method one will be calculating Albert and Ken separately. Let's take a look. For Albert, Albert eats one fourth of all cookies. Therefore, 64 cookie times one over four. One over four meaning the whole cookie are split into four equal parts and Albert eat one of them. Therefore, Albert eats 16 cookies. And let's take a look at Ken. Ken eats 3 eighths of all cookies. Therefore, 64 times 3 over 8. 3 over 8 meaning split into 8 equal parts. And Ken eats three parts. Therefore, 64 split into eight equal parts. One part half eight. And three parts of eight will be three times eight, giving us 24. In the end, the question is asking for total. So for total, we'll have 16 plus 24, giving us 40. Therefore, together, they eat 40 cookies. This is our method number one. We also have a method number two. As for the unit, cookies are all 64 cookies. Therefore, we can directly using 64, timing the total fractions of Albert and can, and that is one fourth plus three eighths. And 64 timing, when one fourth plus three eighths, they have a different denominator. Therefore, we can directly add them up together. What we need to do is we have to changing them, becoming the same denominator. And for Albert, one fourth will also equal to two over 8 plus 3 over 8. Therefore, 64 timing 5 over 8. And we can know that 64 are split into 8 equal parts. And together, they eat 5 parts. So, we can see 8 times 5 giving us 40. In this two different method, we need to understand the concept of fractions. The denominator will be the total equal part you're splitting. The numerator will be the part you're taking. Also, we need to be very careful of the unit amount. Here, the unit amount is all cookies. Question number four. In the figure below, AE is parallel to BC. Given that BC equal to 18 and the distance between point A and side BC is 12, what is the area of triangle BEC? So here, when we're having two parallel lines and when we're having a lot of letters, be careful of your triangles. So here, BC equal to 18. And we also know the distance between point A to BC equal to 12. Here, the distance will indicate that we have perpendicular straight lines between point A to the side BC. Here, 
What is the area for triangle BEC? In order for us to calculate the area for a triangle, we need to know the base times the height divided by 2. Here, we can see the triangle ABC, and we know the base and the height. However, Right now, the question is asking us to calculate the area of triangle B, E, C. And then we can see that the triangle A, B, C and the triangle B, E, C having some common characteristics that they share the same base. B, C. Okay, and then when we're looking at the height for the triangle B, E, C, we'll do a perpendicular line perpendicular to base B, C. Therefore, we can see the height of triangle B, E, C will equal to the height of point A to side BC, the same height as triangle ABC. Because triangle ABC and triangle BEC having the same base, having the same height, therefore the area of triangle ABC will equal to triangle BEC. Okay, therefore, we can calculate the area for triangle BEC will equal to the base times the height divided by 2. That will be 18 times 6, giving us 108. Okay, so for this question, we know that same base and same height, the areas will be the same. And also, be very careful. You need to be knowing how to draw the height, which is from the opposite vertex, drawing a perpendicular line perpendicular to your base. Question number five. It takes a train 11 seconds to entirely passing a tree. Find the speed of the train if the length is 550 meters. Here, it takes a train 11 seconds to entirely passing a tree. What does that mean? So here, we having a tree. Okay, and when we saying when a tree entirely passing the tree, that means the moment the head of your train touching this tree, traveling to one direction, and entirely passing when the end of the same train leaving this tree. Okay, be careful here. There's only one train traveling. Therefore, the distance the train has traveled, we need to calculate from the head of the train to the head of the train. Therefore, the distance it traveled will equal to the length of your train. Okay, so here, we're trying to find out a speed. In order to find out a speed, we need to know the distance as well as for the time. Here, we do know the distance. Distance it traveled equal to the length of the train, which equal to 550 meter. And we also know the time, which is 11 seconds. Therefore, the speed will equal to distance divided by the time equal to the speed, which equal to 50 meter per second. Okay, so for this question, entirely passing meaning head enter to head exit. We always want to calculate from the head of the train to the head of the train. 
and understanding the relationship between distance, speed, and time. Thank you for completing the July Grade 4 Extra Challenge. Hope to see you soon at Think Academy.